Hi, this is Keisha Gallagher again with Grace and Torah at graceandtorah.net coming to you with part two of the month of Shabbat. And as you can see, I am in Arizona, although it's not sunny Arizona today. It's still lovely. We've had a lot of rain and my husband's out here, so I'm going to let him say hi before he goes back in the house. This is my husband, Curtis. <laughs> and so I know some people might want to see him. So we left off with part one talking about buckets. And that's because the mazel of the month is the water carrier and he has a bucket of water and hopefully you have a bucket of water and that water should be giving life and uh, it should not be water of judgment uh, because water is a metaphor for both but it's also a metaphor for teaching like the gentle rain that's like the Torah teaching and so I thought that I would point out if the teaching you are receiving is not coupled with the fruit of the Spirit which remember that's the what's supposed to well up out of you with which is Galatians 5 you you have the fruit mentioned as love joy peace patience kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness and self-control then it's tainted and those waters are bitter and we don't want to give anybody bitter water so those things need to be coupled together because we don't want to be giving them death we want to give them life so anyway deadly bucket it comes from the, the verb dala, and this is very interesting because it means to draw up and to lift up. Why? Because to get water from a well, you have to put the, drop the bucket all the way down into this pit in the ground till it gets to that water level in order to draw those waters out of the earth. And so I love this metaphor because it's it's you know it has to do with lifting up, but it also has to do with um, it, while it's describing that act, it, it also has to do with, you know, pulling them up from the ground. And I don't know about you, but sometimes you got to dig really deep to get those waters, depending on what's going on in your life. So hopefully you're going to find those waters in this month. So here's an, how this verb is used. Proverbs 20 and 5 says, counsel in the heart of man is like deep water. But a man of understanding, Bina, will draw it out. So what are deep waters? Deep waters are mysterious waters. They are murky. They're things we can't see so well. And so that is what the counsel in the heart of man is. Because, you know, our heart is often, we're often double-hearted, double-minded. We have two levs, a leva, where there's two vops there. And um, it takes a man of understanding. There's a level of discernment, and it has to be coupled with that next spirit from Isaiah 11, uh, 1 and 2, which is Aitza, which is tree, which is, this is the month of trees. So um, while everything is laid open and bare to Adonai, it's not so clear to us always because we, we have that other nature that's constantly struggling against us. And so we desperately need the wisdom and the counsel of God. And it's a man of understanding. That's really what applied wisdom is, is Bina, is that understanding. And with that faculty, then he can draw forth those waters that leads to um, a true counsel, godly counsel about what's going on in a man's heart. And hopefully we're able, with Adonai's help, of course, to do this with ourself, to realize what's in our own heart. And so uh, this is also related, Bina is related to the word boné, uh, which means to build. And so you can't build if you don't have this faculty. And I do believe we go through cycles of these, these things with the Spirit. And it's very important that we're constantly going back and looking inward. Going back and then looking inward again. Because no one has arrived. And I think I see a lot of people that are stuck in Bina. If you're stuck in this spirit of counsel, and this is when, I'm sorry, spirit of understanding. This is something Dr. Alwine teaches too then you're separating and separating and separating and separating until death and isolation and bitterness. And I see a lot of people doing that. And so if the separation, if your understanding is not leading to counsel, which is a, a spirit that gathers in humility, mercy, and compassion, uh, it's really just self-righteousness. It, it, it causes us to put forth unrighteous judgment on another person because it's not tempered in Adonai's long suffering and compassion and mercy. And it 
leads to isolation, which is a lack of gathering. Okay, so all of that will stomp growth rather than build and promote growth. So let's tie some themes together. Our uh, tribe for the month is Asher, and his name means happy. <laughs> Are you happy? Sometimes I'm happy, sometimes I'm not happy. Doesn't mean you have to be happy all the time, but you know, happiness, I believe, is a choice, and we're going to get into that, because Merriam-Webster defines happy as a feeling or showing pleasure or contentment. Think about that. You can choose uh, to find contentment no matter the circumstance, and so in Hebrew, the verbal root of asher means to go straight, to walk, to go on, to advance, and to make progress, so this is the root of happiness. It has, you have to be able to make progress. And that doesn't mean in the worldly sense of just outward prosperity. This is about an inward work because you could be the most destitute person on the planet and find contentment and therefore happiness. So obviously this is healthy, good growth. So sometimes it's used figuratively to follow a straight path. So let's look at Proverbs 9, 6. Forsake foolishness. And live, chaya, and go, asher, in the way, derek, of understanding, bina. So, did you see how that connected Asher, our month, the tribe for the month, with bina and understanding, which is symbolized, of course, by that bucket or that pail that pours forth. So, this is contrasted with the word folly or foolishness, depending on your translation, and that Hebrew word is peti. It sounds like the English word petty, and uh, which this, the accent on the syllable is a little different, but still, <laughs> I think it's ironic that they sound so similar and mean sort of the same thing, because this person, this is a person who is naive concerning the complexities and challenges of life. They're inexperienced, and they lack insight. Uh, insight is bina. It's that understanding spirit. So is happiness a choice? The Hebrew implies Yes, it most definitely is a choice. So one who is happy is not naive concerning the trials and tribulations of life. They have not escaped great suffering or difficult challenges, and yet somehow they've managed to overcome and find that place of contentment once again. So John sixteen thirty three says, These things I have spoken to you that in me you may have shalom. In the world, you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, or that Greek word can mean take courage. I have overcome the world, and that is our hope, and that's where our focus needs to be. So if we trust Adonai and we believe that everything in life is under his divine sovereign rule, and I believe it is, nothing has taken him by surprise, not one thing that's happened to you in this life then we can learn to proclaim with Paul. And I love this. This is from Romans uh, 5, 1 through 5. And this is the tree of life version. <laughs> tree? Yeah. Therefore, having been made righteous by trusting, faith, we have shalom with God through our Lord Yeshua, the Messiah. Through him, we also have gained access by faith into this grace in which we stand and boast in the hope of God's glory. And not only that, but we also boast in suffering, which is that Greek word can mean tribulation, affliction, trouble, anguish, and burdens. Paul says, we also boast in these things, knowing that that suffering is going to produce perseverance and perseverance character and character hope. Do you see the progression of maturity here? This is building. This is being our. And hope does not disappoint because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Ruach HaKodesh who was given to us. Did you catch the pail there, the bucket? God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit and his bucket is, is bottomless. It's never ending and it's always full. 
and it's beyond our comprehension. We have a very difficult time comprehending it. So the Greek word is, is also used to describe abundant and generous bl the blood of sacrifice for sin and the outpouring of God's Spirit in Joel 2 in the Septuagint. So you can see the flow, the pour, the pouring into us. So we have a choice when we're faced with our tribulations and trials. While we can't control our circumstances, one iota, um, we can make better choices. That will help our circumstances. But sometimes we're the circumstances we have no control over because Adonai has sovereignly chose to put us in those circumstances for our growth, not to harm us, not to make life hard or bitter, but to grow us spiritually. And we can choose how we react to these circumstances. That's our choice. And that's why happiness is a choice. So this doesn't mean you're never afraid. It doesn't mean you're never sad. It doesn't mean you're not going to grieve. It doesn't mean you're not going to have seasons where things are really, really bad and hard and difficult. And you might, you might need some time and that's okay too. But you are an overcomer. That's what you're called to be. And so um, we know who it is and whom we trust. And he is good, very good. And he's acquainted with our grief. So we choose to believe in his promises. And so that is our how we become asher, happy, and we move forward, right? That's the verbal root, remember, of asher. It's to progress, right? So to believe and act otherwise makes us that, that weird word, petty, in, in Hebrew. It's a foolish one. We don't want to be a fool. Who wants to be a fool? And it also turns you into a scoffer. And it leads to isolation and bitterness. So the verses following Proverbs 9, 6, this is verses 7 through 12, says, He who corrects a scoffer gets shame for himself, and he who rebukes a wicked man only harms himself. Do not correct a scoffer lest he hate you. Rebuke a wise man and he'll love you. Do you see the difference in the attitude of these people? Have you ever corrected someone and they scoffed at you? Tried to put you to shame? Do you see how they are not um, the one that is uh, full of the Holy Spirit and acting with those attributes. They're not asher, they are petty. And it goes on to say, give instruction to a wise man and he will be still wiser. Teach a just man and he will increase in learning. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. For by me your days will be multiplied and years of life will be added to you. If you are wise, you are wise for yourself. And if you scoff, you'll bear it alone. See the isolation? It always leads you there. But you're stuck in the separation stage. So, interestingly, you know, according to tradition, this is the month of Shabbat. It would be the month that Moses was preparing for his death because they traditionally say he died on Adar the 7th. So, what did he do? What, some of his last words were of correction and rebuke. Will I receive them? Can you receive correction and rebuke? I know it hurts. I hate to receive it. But at the same time, it's like, if someone really loves me, and I know God does, then it's for my good. It's to lead me to a better place, a higher place, and where my bucket will stay full. So, uh, in Romans 5, uh, Paul reminds us to consider what is happening, basically, on the inside of an inner man. And metaphorically, we could say, what's going on in the inside of those trees right now? Because in the winter, the leaves shed, the sap sinks down into the roots, and they appear dead on the outside. And sometimes we do feel all dried up and, and dead, you know, depending on the circumstance. But there is no doubt that what's going on in that tree is that um, that sap is going to rise. It's going to rise up in that tree and nourish all the trunk and all the branches so that they'll put forth those baby leaves and they'll put forth eventually fruit and seed. So there's in when we're looking at these dire, hard, tight, tribulation type places, what's happening is there's an inner work being done in us. So the sap is rising from those roots. Okay, and that's what we want to see. And what causes the sap to rise in a tree? Pressure. <laughs> that's not a coincidence guys it's pressure 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 so during those warm periods uh, when the temperatures rise above freezing pressure starts developing in the tree and then it causes the sap to flow out of the tree through 
uh, up through its uh, trunk and branches. So I hope you can also even see in that the analogy even linked to the water, the bucket, you being that bucket. So if you have been in the midst of great trials and suffering and tribulations, I encourage you um, to think on those good promises of Hashem. You know, the pressures of the life are actually forcing that sap to rise up in you, which is like the Holy Spirit. And there is a beautiful promise in Isaiah 65, 22 that says, They will not build and another inhabit, nor plant and another eat. For like the days of a tree, so will be the days of my people. And my chosen ones will long enjoy the work of their hands. So in these Torah portions, too, we read about the narrow escape right, of the children of Israel from Pharaoh, and then walking through the tight place uh, like a birth canal of the reed or Red Sea. And they watched the Egyptians drown in, this, in the same waters that actually stood up and congealed for them, uh, go over in judgment on Pharaoh. And so what were they really seeing? They were seeing a transformation. They were being becoming transformed. And what we are seeing is watching it while reading it, the transformation from a slave to a free man or a free woman. And that is what Adonai is constantly working in us, guys. That is the whole point in all of our tribulations, always. It's to get us to be truly free and alive and full of his water. So if you feel as though you're at your proverbial 11th hour, take courage. Be happy. So... Proverbs 3.18 says, She is a tree of life to those who take hold of her, and happy are all who hold her fast. And that's the Torah. That's Messiah. That is the spirit of wisdom, uh, which is um, leads us to that resurrection spirit. So I pray that you'll be a bucket in Shabbat, that you'll be a tree, that you will be a share, that you will be happy. And so I'm going to leave you with a blessing for the month of Shabbat. May the Holy One, blessed be He, renew Shabbat unto us and unto all His people, the house of Israel, for life and for peace, for gladness and for joy, for salvation and consolation, for a good livelihood and sustenance, for good reports and tidings, for rains in their season, for complete healing and speedy redemption. And let us say, Amen. Oh, one last thing. Maybe go read the poem by Joyce uh, Kilmer, The Tree or Trees. It's really good, and it's fitting for this month. So um, have a blessed month, and I hope to see you again soon. Shalom.